All right, we got ourselves a daytime video. Unfortunately, I went and got this seal, but uh, nobody has the coolant leak seal, which let me grab the keys here for Bertha, and I'm gonna pop the hood for you guys and show you what is going on. I've really wanted to fix this coolant leak, and I finally was like, eh, we gotta drop the Dakota off for inspection. So I'm like, let's go, uh, let's go order the part for this coolant leak. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, they did not have, I'm just going to get rid of this. This thing's been a pain in the ass. And it also leads all that stuff in there and rubs and this and that. So, you guys see, I have a coolant leak. It's very minor, but it's still there. You guys can see right there, we have a coolant leak. So this whole bracket needs to come off. And that means the AC compressor, all that needs to come off for me to be able to fix that leak. Now there's a little O-ring seal that seals them. So I'm gonna show you on this other motor. I think what I might end up doing, if I can't find the seal and I get the time to do it today, I might end up just taking this seal here. Uh, Cause this one did not leak that I know of. So pulling this whole thing off and uh, it's around Literally right there, this whole thing comes off. One, two, three, four, five. There's actually six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So there's six bolts. So this whole piece comes off. This guy right here, there's a pulley for here, and then there is the AC compressor. Now, I do not have any AC, and my system is drained, so I'm not super worried about it. But we're gonna do one thing at a time. I got some scotch Bright. We have a whole case of it on order. But I'm gonna get this transfer case seal replaced because I'm tired of filling the transfer case. We got the fifth wheel in last night. This thing is perfect. And even at its max, it does not hit the toolbox no matter which way we do it. This thing's rated for about 16K. 17K is about what the truck can do uh, legally with uh, non-CDL requirements. But I think that's, uh, that's gonna be perfect for what we need. And it is a slide hitch. Um, I need to clean this out, so I'm going to take this thing to the car wash tonight. But I'm going to try to get rid of all the issues that I can. Um, we are going to be doing the rear main eventually, pulling all that apart. And then not only with the rear main, we're going to do the um, uh, billet flex plates. Uh, so I have learned my lesson and not... Uh, I don't like making those bolts super tight because they are a bitch to get off when you do. But they came off pretty good. Now here's where we're at. That seal's leaking. And... We were able to get one of the two bolts off without a wrench. I had to go, actually, you know what? I just went and did that whole distance and didn't actually go grab the wrench. I got my hammer and my chisel for that, but did not grab the wrench. So I'm a scotch bright and uh, break clean that. We're gonna pound that seal out, put the new seal in, clean up everything on the end. Remember, this is my truck, so I don't give a fuck, but I just wanna make sure there's no leaks. All right, went through, cleaned out the shaft. I will check the fluid. Seems like it's, I mean, if you look at the level, it definitely sits up in there. So we definitely have enough, but I'm definitely gonna also check it. So now we're just gonna get the second piece on. Would you guys consider this carrier good? I think it's still all right. It's got life in it. So it's all back together. It's not hatefully low. Um, like probably about right here. I am gonna fill it though, because still, there's a little bit left in this, so I'm just gonna top it off with whatever's in this. And you guys, you guys remember that? I'm gonna pound this back into place because I have a hammer right now. There, we got it literally right at the top without dripping. So we're gonna put that back in. We are perfectly level. So we were definitely leaking. So I'm glad that we're doing this. I even scotch brighted everything, so let's get that tight and we're done. I did go and grab a second quart. It didn't use very much of it. I'm like down to here, so. All right, real quick, ignore the shitty quality. Right here is where the seal goes. You see this little thing right here? So this is your bottleneck right there. AC compressor and then your lower rad hose and then your tensioner and then lower alternator bolt. And if you guys see there, there is an Allen inside of this motherfucker right here. Big pain in the ass, but that's your little seal right there. I'm gonna try to pull that out. So that little guy right there literally just sits on that groove. 
Now this one wasn't leaking, and uh, I've reused them before. I'm almost tempted to just do this job and slap that in there. Like, it's my truck, so I might just end up reusing this used one and throwing a ton of RTV at it, but part of me is like, do it, because I want to get it over with, and the other part of me is like, well, if it fails, then I got to do it again. Ah, decisions, decisions. So I was going to tackle it, and then I was like, ah, eh, fuck it, you know? Because, like, putting that seal in, so I'm just putting the intake back on now. I decided to start gutting it, because I'm going to tell you guys what, I don't give a shit what anybody says. When I was running the factory, like, no filter at all, just running it like this, in limp mode, it had more power and more, well, maybe more responsiveness, I should say. And then I put the Cintiq on I got from Sam. Even with a brand new air filter, it immediately, you could feel a difference. So, I'm going to gut it and keep the filter. Because this will be the best factory option. Like, I got this thing out. And I'm going to go take this part to the vise and beat the fuck out of it with a hammer to gut this and I'll let you guys fuck you. I'll let you guys know if it makes a difference it's like a little cylinder thing I'll push that out the bottom see that and then I'm pretty sure it splits apart and it is directional see this comes out I'm gonna burn this Fuck you. And then this. Um, unfortunately, I think I need to put this back in. I don't know. We'll see. Because you can see there's the two arrows and then there's the other arrow. But there's nothing for this to grab. So let's, uh, let's see if I can throw this back together the way it is. All right. So unfortunately, for reasons of clamping force, I do have to put that piece back in, which gives you all those stupid little thingies. If it hurts anything, I'll... I'll do something. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Let's see if we get any bit of difference from this because I already had it off So I might as well try it. Um, I'm gonna clamp this back throw it back on and then we'll go for a test drive All right, so I'm still waiting On the injector So the thing runs like dog shit, but we're gonna go to the car wash after that We're gonna go to the shop go go drop off my other truck the Dakota go get that um Inspect it, get a key fob done, and I gotta clean the bed out of this thing, and then probably do a bike video. Thought the thing was unplugged, but the thing runs like dog shit. Come on. I need my injector. Yeah, runs like fucking shit. It like kicked out that cylinder for a minute and then threw a check engine light. I hear the shit rattling up there, that one cylinder. Kind of annoying. I'd like to get that fucking sixth injector back in. All right, here's where we're at. I didn't do like a super great in-depth cleaning. I just wanted to mainly get this section and the fifth wheel cleaned out because there was like a lot of dirt and stuff in there. So I gotta figure out how this thing works. I was able to move it. I can't push it any back back any further, but not that I'm going to, but I might end up pulling it forward a little bit, depending on what this clears, but the fifth wheel is done and nice. I, uh, I did burn some of the leaves out of the center, but I said it sucks it's only rated for 15K, but for what it is, it'll definitely do the job, because I don't ever plan on really towing more than 17 with it, and these things usually have 10 to 20% higher of a rating than what they're rated for, so. I don't really see me pulling fifth wheels over 15K anyway. It's just one of those, it's 2,500. So let's get out of here. I gotta go pick up the wife and the Dakota because we're driving that off. And it is a cluster fuck. Bye boys, I uh, screwed up a little bit. Uh, we're down in North Carolina and just got done with uh, my 10 hour break in the Few Island. Took a piss in the Few Island. And now we're heading over uh, to go pick up a boat going to Nevada and it's unfortunate the way that this whole trip uh, was kind of entailed I signed the paperwork yesterday and I almost got screwed out of this one because I am still waiting on the injectors and every single time I've said something about it I have gotten ghosted 
and it's just gotten worse and worse with these parts over the years. Um, it's like dealing with a, a Robert Hurley all over again, but this guy's even, like, it's even worse now. It's like, ah, uh, so truck basically runs like shit. We got six, you know, in, good injectors in it, but one of them's stock, and that's basically the story we're fighting right now. So if one of these goes out, I gotta buy another stock injector, and unfortunately, these things are so expensive. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna probably make a whole video on this specific topic coming down the road depending on which way this plays out because I'm basically it's like a 46 hour drive from Pennsylvania to North Carolina to Nevada and this load paid well enough that I mean you guys can see by the title it's not worth me not taking it let's put it that way so I'm gonna see how this plays out and we'll see if uh, if we end up making a dedicated video on this specific topic. So I got about 26 minutes left, and then we're gonna be picking up, and you guys will see what it is. I don't know 100% what it is yet. I was told it's a boat on a trailer, it's a little wide, but they literally texted me yesterday, said, do you want this? To give me like 15 minutes to think about it, and I was like, you know what, I need to just say yes, because I, I miss the hot shot money, I really do. But, as you know, I'm not an OTR driver. I'm literally just taking this load out. I got a fifth wheel now. So hopefully finding something coming back into the general area is pretty good. Um, if I can go out and back and do about 10 to 12 grand gross between two loads, I would be perfectly okay with that. Even if I only do 10, I'd be perfectly okay with that. But maybe we go to Nevada and uh, gamble some money away in the casinos. But let's let's get down there. Formula factory shipping cover. So this is the exact same shipping cover that came from the factory when it was new. All right. Shouldn't have any trouble out of it. I say taking a video of everything makes it a lot easier. I have so many pictures on my phone from these loads, and it's like they all just add up. Two and five sixteenths, I'm assuming. All right, there she is. Big boat, 14,000 pounds. No damage, brand new. Let's talk about them, get the tires aired up. But we're gonna back under, probably grease the ball. All right, we are all hooked up to the trailer. I was doing my once over. I figure I'll just put that in the video. Um, so we have some dilemmas, one. This was a fight. He's going to grab a bolt for this because the pin won't fit. And then also, the breakaway doesn't work. He said they've been driving it like that. So, that's a thing. Um, I will check the trailer brakes before we leave. But basically, this and this are what hold it. We're going about 2,500 miles. You guys are going to love this because like, I'm on the road and I did my grocery shopping and shit. And uh, there is eight chocolate milks in here nine and a tenth one right there so i'm gonna put this one in the cooler swap it out it was 40 last night so it's fine but i'm gonna swap that one out i'm gonna put this one in which buys me more time with that now we have a good one and then we have this here to drop off with the customer, just a little goodie bag. All right, we're going in to get the BOL, but everything is good. He said that that trailer came up from Florida like that, and uh, it's a little concerning. That means it's not their fault. Somebody fucked up along the way. But this little box here, this is about $10,000, so we gotta drop that off to the customer too. But we should be good on this trip. Trailer weighs about 14,000 pounds. We're gonna go print the paperwork, get a signature, and we're gonna head on our way. I can't believe I was gonna lose this load because of some fucking bullshit. I got the trans temp. Um, keep in mind, starting from a dead stop, that initial up and over the hump. Uh, we got her about 205, and then just driving around, locking the converter up. Um, I did have to go way out of my way to go do a U-turn because there's no way to make the left out of there. 
had to make a right, go two roads up, make a right, go like three miles down, make a U-turn in a development. Basically, it was just a throughway. Come back, make the left, and then come back. So now we're finally just passing the place. And Trans Temp is chilling around 167, or well, 177, I should say. So, but she's pretty gravy. Not a hard load to move, shift to second. We've got about a mile till we gotta get over. She's doing all right. So I will say the brakes do work with or without the breakaway. And yeah, she stops pretty damn well, believe it or not. For 14,000 pounds, so I probably gross about like 23. Great, everybody's taking off. I'm not even gonna try. Like I'm just gonna crash up, cruise up to the light. In my opinion, for what this is, being a boat, I feel like so far, with good tires, this is a gravy load for what it's paying. Bertha's not struggling, I'm just, there's no point in me flooring it to get up this hill with this much weight. Alright, that was, that was okay. Um, no point in me flooring it getting up the, uh, up to speed when, like, I'm just gonna stop, so. I'll do, they are neutral. I ordered the seal see my coolant temps 210 I ordered the seal um, it won't be in until after I get back it was literally like $23 to get that seal there we go shouldn't overheat though once the fan kicks on it'll come down or it should. We shall see. We're locked, so the trans temp should come down as well. But now it's uh, steady cruising until we hit the next uh, fuel station. All right, it's been about 200 miles. I'm gonna check. Make sure everything is tight. It is. Make sure we don't have any blowouts. You guys know the drill. We're here to pilot Flying J. One or the other. It's all the same, right? So, sitting behind this uh, Swift truck that's just chilling in the aisle, doing his 30. Everything looks all right. The brakes have been doing good. Tire pressure's good. Truck's been doing fine. We've been chilling. This thing really does like, is, is really, really sway happy. So that's the only annoyance on this, but we do have, I think, like 36 hours to go, something like that. 36, 35, I don't know. But let's start honking at this fucking Swift truck. It's just chilling here. You can get to your fuel and move. All right, so we are full of fuel, and I went and made me some ravioli. What could go wrong, right? I can't even take a shit in peace without fucking politics getting brought up. <laughs> you go in there and they got fuck Joe Biden. By the way, fuck Joe Biden. But they got that put on the damn thing back there and I'm like, you know it's bad when everyone comes together to say this guy fucking sucks. But we're in a pilot now. I'm getting ready. Um, had to take a nap. I was fucking tired from last night. I think we have like 35-ish hours to go. And I kind of squeezed through these two trucks. Mind you, I think... Actually, I gotta figure out where I even parked. I'm pretty sure they said I was either 10 or 11 wide. I can't remember. But there I am parked. And you'll see that the boat's on the line on this side. And I don't think we're hitting the line on that side. So I'm gonna get her started up, make me a bagel, and we are gonna head on our way. So this is kind of where we're at, back here. Yeah, like all my food organized, um, all non-perishables for the road. Got my applesauce, got a, a little baggie of donuts. We got the uh, muffins back there, and then we have four more down there. Full cooler full of chocolate milk, bagels, which I'm going to make one now, and then plenty of ravioli and, and uh, granola bars. So we're doing good. Not trying to do too much um, on when I'm doing this over the road shit that I say I'm not gonna do but then I end up doing I'm not trying to eat like a crazy amount like just if I can see my 2500 calories a day I'm fine with that 
but when I'm home I'm doing like 4200 a day so definitely gets uh, a little tricky yeah I think everything's nice and organized I'd be I'd be okay with that for a little bit I'll have to you know do a little bit more later but all right I missed it but we drove let's uh, let's let's see here 255 miles watching me some uh, grocery store simulator that's a three-hour episode by the way so I'm gonna get some fuel I'm gonna make some food probably gonna end the video here and call it good so appreciate you guys for sticking around uh, we have a shitload of time left on this trip not looking forward to it I think I got four hours more of drive time today and then we're gonna try to hit it really hard tomorrow